eso te pasó por no saber que todo tiene su precio atrevido eso te pasó atrevido eso te pasó por no saber que todo tiene su precio atrevido eso te pasó por no saber atrevido hey nana comenzaré yo a relatarles este historino es de allá leyenda que contaba chulo viejo te va en barrio, boca a boca, en la calzada, a los oídos del curioso rellenaba. Ah, ah, había una vez, una pareja de provista, poca vista, sin dinero, pensando atómico, tónico, crónico, cómo vivir, salir de negro fango que lo gaba. Ramaba, andaba en entre besos, una cámara silente, para un estúpido, tupido cliente, que de vivo el punto mira se las daba. Estaba, andaba, vigilando a la criolla de carnada. Eso te pasó por no saber que todo tiene su precio. Alrighty, this is like take 643 of me trying to conclude and finish off this build series. All I want to say is welcome back to the final episode of the Poor Man's GDR. It's been a great journey. I've been gone for six or seven months. I've got five topics I just quickly want to cover. Every time I say quickly, I've spent 30 minutes talking in front of the camera, which I don't want to do. I want to end this build series on a positive note, but let's just quickly talk about it. Did the car ever get finished? How much did the car cost? Why I quit YouTube? How much money I made off YouTube? And what is the future of the YouTube channel if I'm going to continue filming videos? And why is there two Supras, a 33, a 32 GDR 180SX and another 34 in the workshop? Two 34s in the workshop. We're gonna talk about today really quickly. Starting with the car. Did the car ever get finished? Yes, it got finished uh, enough for it to drive on the road. We had no power steering. We had no air conditioning. We had no idle air control valve. We had no stereo system or sound system. So, really, there was a lot of things missing to make it a nice, luxurious car to drive on the road or as luxurious as a shitty 90s Japanese car can possibly be. Overall, comparing a Skyline to a Silvia, far superior car, way better built car, heavier car, just more stable on the road, definitely suits my style of driving a lot more, long distance, travels, that sort of thing. Compared to a Silvia, don't get me wrong, I love a Silvia. I've got a 180SX outside, but I really want an S15. It just serves a different purpose, the S15. It's a lighter car, it's a more fun car to have, but as I said, I wanna travel. That is the future of the YouTube channel. I'm going to travel in this car, I'm gonna travel Australia first, and then if I have the opportunity or the desire to ship it over to New Zealand, I'm gonna go send it to New Zealand, spend three or four weeks there. I've already got a shipping quote and how much it costs to send there and back. I'm gonna create content. I just don't wanna do what everybody else does and become commercialized is why I quit YouTube. I needed to take a step back and really rethink everything I've done. Once again, going back to the vehicle, we got yellow stickered, bent over by the police once again, taking our number plates away. The car is unregistered, meaning I could have got it back on the road in a relatively short amount of time but I decided to go down a different route, which I'll talk in a future episode, and completely transform this car once again, get it closer to what my dream initially was, but the funds were never there to back it up. Since then, I've started a mini restoration business, maybe flip a few cars here and there, and we'll find a way to fund this project. In the future, it is not a priority because we have multiple, multiple cars behind us as rolling or bare shells that I want to restore before I do that as long-term investments, which I'll get to in a future episode, but we're just trying to skim everything real quick. YouTube, very stressful, very rewarding. You get to connect with an audience, you get to make videos, you know, you get to connect with an audience on a level that you wouldn't freaking believe. Like I started this YouTube channel, this build series with less than a thousand subscribers, we're at 84,000 people subscribed to the YouTube channel now. Numbers don't mean to me as much as real heartfelt comments if that makes sense or messages people sending me videos or photos of their projects how they've progressed or whatever they might be doing saying this or that inspired me to do it and it's really rewarding to see how you know i think people just just because i'm on the internet 
to some people this might be like a hyped up thing or like an amazing thing, but at the end of the day, it's just a fucking piece of metal with four wheels on it. It's no different to any other car out there. Like obviously for a lot of people, it's their dream to have this and it was mine as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not doing anything that's out of the ordinary, but I can understand how this might inspire some people to really progress or give it a shot themselves. Because at the end of the day, you're looking at a 20, 21, 20, I'm 22 now. But at the time when I bought the car, I was 19, had no clue what, what I'm doing. Pretty much no finances, minimal finances to back all this up. And we found a way to make it happen. So obviously somebody out there that's doing the same sees somebody that's already achieved it and they believe that if somebody's done it, I can do it as well. So that's a very rewarding thing that I get from this YouTube channel is I see people progressing in the direction they want to take and they, they keep me updated, you know, they keep me updated. So the vehicle itself, going back to it once again, is on the back burner for now. I'm probably gonna take it home, it's just sort of collecting dust here. YouTube, how much money, did, did I say how much money this cost? Because I've already done this like 64 million times, so I think I'll just say it again. The car cost 26,000 Australian dollars start to finish, including the car, including any form of labor I had to pay, including the body panels, including all the parts, the engine, everything start to finish. Obviously the car was never finished properly, but it cost $26,000. Now, I can't be stuffed arguing with people anymore. There's not too many people that argue. The people that have common sense go, wow, that's very cheap for what it is. And then there's people that have no fucking clue what the market's like and they go, oh, it's not a poor man's GDR. At the end of the day, that's nothing. Look at the state or the market that's going on nowadays. Parts are becoming discontinued. The, those rear quarter panels used to retail for $3,000. Obviously, I paid less because my drug dealer Abdul from Total Nissan. But nowadays, these quarters went discontinued, put under the Nismo Heritage Program. They are $5,100. So what once was a poor man's GDR for most people nowadays is going to be a lot more expensive to complete. And the way I did it with um, everything, I think mine was really, really stupidly, ridiculously cheap to others out there. But we can talk about this in another episode, really break down the cost of every single component that went on the car. But for now, YouTube. YouTube is my biggest passion. I think about it every day. During those six or seven months, not a day went by where I didn't think of a video idea or something I wanted to film. But when you're a perfectionist and you overthink things, things take a lot longer to do. Um, you're almost seeking approval from yourself. Um, there are limits as well where you're trying to, trying to make everyone happy behind the screen as well. Everybody has a different opinion or a desire or the way they would do it. Making everybody happy is impossible. I've realized that. Concentrating on numbers, view counts and all that, fuck that, I'm not about that anymore. Don't want to concentrate on that. Because as the channel started growing, there obviously was a potential to uh, get revenue off and I'll openly talk about that as well. I've made approximately $20,000 off this build series, which I'll break down in a future episode for you to understand that the amount of stress and the amount of work involved into producing this build series and working on the car, those $20,000 is nothing. But Regardless, I would have done all of this even if I didn't get a cent from it. So $20,000 was considered a massive bonus. In terms of the future, I want to concentrate on the things I really want to do. I want to send a different message out there. I think in the car community, everybody's too concentrated on cars. It is a very involving hobby that's very expensive as well. So it takes away all your free time and all your money for you to actually be able to do anything else other than cars and I wanna sort of show a different view and a different perspective. So as the channel progressed as well, as the view count started rising, sponsors did reach out, which mo for the most part, I did refuse. Don't wanna sell myself out into something I don't believe. Don't wanna push something that I don't believe in, whether it be a brand or a product, whether it's relatable, relatable or not. Um, I just want to concentrate on quality really. There was massive potential to you know, grow quicker through merch and stuff like that. Once again, didn't want to do it. Didn't want to be like, oh, this kid's gone broke and now he's trying to get us to pull him out of the shitter. I wanted to do this. I wanted to show people that you can be an average person working minimum wage or even a part-time job like I did at university still and be able to afford this. Obviously, I do have debt, which we'll get to in a further episode and why I bought this to get out of debt. Um, Man, I'm honestly gonna talk openly about everything. 
Uh, as I said, the channel started growing, uh, the potential for getting sponsors on board and making more content that is sponsor friendly, if you may call it, that's what really burnt me out. Making videos to cater to what someone else might like out there in the corporate world for you to get free parts. It's not free at the end of the day. You're paying, they're still getting something out of you. You're paying with your time and everything else. But for the most part, that's where the YouTube channel started taking that direction. That wasn't the direction I wanted to take since day one. So it took me a while to realize what was actually happening to take a step back and realize, why am I doing why am I doing that? That's not what I want to do. So I think that's where this massive break of six or seven months came into play to really ask myself, what are you going to do with this YouTube channel, Damien? And I've come up with the answer to, to say thank you for all your support and everybody showing love through comments, showing support through messages, sharing the videos, subscribing to the YouTube channel, wanting more videos, giving positive feedback, constructive criticism and all that. But I think the, the, the way the YouTube channel is gonna head right now is pretty much no fucks given, post whatever I wanna post. It's gonna be a vlog, so every vlog is going to be numbered. In the next vlog, if I wanna talk about the first drive in this car and then getting bent over by police and then going to Sydney and then why I put the super on the rotisserie and then maybe the fourth video I can talk about my debt and how to how you know afford these things because people want to know that as well. I want to talk about openly about everything. I want to be as transparent as possible. Don't think there's enough of it on the internet. So that is my goal. The true behind the scenes of Broken Sylvia. I'm sure this video has been longer than I wanted it to, but once again, thank you very much. We'll see you on the vlog. I know the views are gonna drop, don't give a shit. It's the people that wanna stick around and watch these videos that get true value from it that matter. Give me your feedback, message me, comment, do whatever you have to do. Peace out, we'll see you in the near future. Probably next week. Tim auf der Plan, Top Girl, Tonic an der Bar, Kick down, Audi SQ8, Blick Tunnel geben Gas, Level auf der Autobahn, Kopf ist Kaffa, Spotlight fatal, Kopf war Block vor paar Jahren und verfolgt vom Gendarm, Flick so Afrika, doch am Block noch parat, Loco kaputt, greif an, Flick, Jock, Luft, Van Damme. Sechs K Tisch, Club, war bezahlt, Zwei Uhr nachts kommt Entourage, Guck wie er glänzt, Diamant, Und ich sag, Gib mir Flaschen und ich sing, 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 sing. Flöss, flöss, flöss Liebe im Mitteln, trotzdem zeig ich kein Gesicht Afterparty 